exactly what you've done here today? Yeah, look, you heard me say last week we needed to assess data and information. We've done that. We've spent a couple of weeks now assessing the analytics of tackles across the game. Um, and what we have done is we've recalibrated with our match review panel. And what you will see very clearly, again, we put player safety at the forefront of the decisions, but what you'll see going forward from this weekend is if players are put into a dangerous position, dangerous being heading towards the ground, contact could be head or neck, irrelevant of the outcome, they can expect a charge. So what, what is it that's been happening that's made you act like this? I think it's fair to say over the first six weeks there was a number of tackles that weren't charged that we were unhappy about. And you talk about some players were, were fortunate enough to get themselves out of it, some of the tackle players, and what you're saying now is that the onus is on the defender to make sure they don't even have to be in a lucky position. If a player is coming down from a dangerous position and by luck he rolls out of that or puts his forearm down or rolls out of the tackle, that's not an excuse to get out of a charge. Players need to be aware that the onus of responsibility is on them. Do you think that the match review committee has been interpreting the, the rule somehow wrong? No, I think, I think what you'll see from time to time in the game that the game has the power and the opportunity through the rules to direct the match review panel with certain gradings on tackles. And it's clear over the first six weeks we wanted to review that and we've done that, but we've done it based on the information that's been made available to us through the research and the statistics. You're basically saying that they're playing with fire, so really lifting tackles will become a thing of the past. Not, not lifting tackles. I think it's very important people understand lifting tackles in the game are here to stay. There are lots of lifting tackles in the game that are clearly safe. We're talking about dangerous lifting tackles and players being put in a dangerous position. And if players are put in dangerous positions irrelevant to the outcome, they can expect a charge. But if you start to lift, you risk that though. If you start to lift, you now know that you risk whether it's an accident or not. A lot of people over the last two weeks have called for things like banning three-man tackles. That's not the answer. A lot of people have, have asked for other rule changes in the game. That's not the answer. The answer is not to put players in a dangerous position in a lift. And if players are put in that, other players can expect to be charged. Todd, what you've done here... They can be under the rules. If they have been part of a lifting tackle and they have contributed to put that player into the dangerous position, they can be charged too. Who makes that determination? It doesn't seem to be clear. Is it clear that all three players will be charged if they're involved in the tackle? It, it depends who's doing the lifting and it depends again on the amount of lifting that's being applied. But again, I'll say the same thing. If a player, a tackler, puts a player into a position that's dangerous and dangerous being above the horizontal or heading toward the ground where his head or neck could hit the ground and it's possible and if the player gets out of that through good luck that's not doesn't stop us charging that player it again it will depend on tackle by tackle I don't want to talk about individual tackles but what I will say if there's a dangerous position applied to a player that all three or all two in that tackle have contributed to they can be charged And, and, and that's the message today is there is clarity and there will be consistency going forward because what I'm saying to you is that if a player is placed in a dangerous position and he's heading towards the ground with his head or neck and he could touch the ground with that and he's dangerous, players can expect to be charged. I can't be clearer, I can't provide any more clarity on it than that. Do past gradings go out the window? So what used to be a two might be a three or something and work like that? Well, it, what you'll see is the threshold has been clearly lowered and you will see more charges applied for players lifted into a dangerous position. It is not an excuse for a player to roll out of it or to put his arm down. That's not an excuse not to be charged. And the match review panel have been clearly, clearly outlined on, on the expectations from the game. So do you talk about, sorry, a dangerous position um, being above horizontal? Are you talking about above horizontal? It, it, that's one of the key indicators, is when a player is tipped beyond the horizontal, being that his head or his neck is below his hips, and he's heading towards the ground, he's in a dangerous position. And if that constitutes a charge, then so be it. We've got to make sure that our players understand that putting other players in the position of dangerous tackles is not on. And we've got to put player safety at the forefront of our decisions. I've said this consistently, and I've said that we'll continue to make decisions in the best interest of the game on behalf of the players, and this is exactly what we're doing today. Wouldn't what information it be better for players just not to be lifted one leg off the ground, it doesn't. It doesn't work that way. When you look at the data and you look at the analytics, there are a lot of good quality rugby league tackles that include lifting. That's been in the game for 100 plus years and it will continue. What I'm saying to you is 
players, when they lift, need to understand not to put players in dangerous positions. You can make a good lifting tackle without it being dangerous. But, but, but good lifts always... also go wrong too. So now you're playing with fire. The onus of responsibility is on the tackler. And if they put players in a dangerous spot, they'll be charged. Is there any individual case where you felt this is the right that the rules have to be changed? There's a number of individual cases over the first six rounds that we were not happy with the outcome. And that's why we've made this decision today. So the NRA will make a mistake by only uh, charging Jordan McLean as a tackle? I'm, I'm not going to talk about individual tackles of, of specific games. What I'm going to say to you is over the, f the first six rounds of the NRL season this year, we were not happy, the game was not happy that there were certain tackles that weren't charged. And we've changed the threshold for the match review committee in order for them to discharge their duties. Is this an admission that's been a lack of consistency? It's not an admission of lack of consistency. I think what you'll see is the match review panel will make decisions according to the directions they are given. And we have realigned their directions moving forward from this weekend. I think it's important people understand that. Is there any thought on duty? The rule hasn't changed that, but the rule was the problem with the match review committee. And they had to look like they were going to hit head first to, to be charged. That's one paragraph in the rule. There are various other parts of the directions that can be applied to the match review panel. And the match review panel looked at for the first six rounds, an interpretation of that rule which we have clarified with them through directions. And again, I'll say the same thing, that if a player is heading to the ground in a dangerous position, he's been tipped beyond the horizontal, and his head or neck could come likely to touch the ground, irrelevant of whether he gets out of that position or not, players can expect to be charged. Is there any thought to increasing the points for each grading? Because at the moment, a grade one, it's, if you don't have carry you don't miss a week. No, I don't think there's any uh, determination on changing penalties because the penalties that go up from grade to grade, from grade one to two, go up by 200 points. So you'll see um, players very quickly will understand they're not going to put their opponents in a difficult spot. Are you hoping this move eliminates the need for any further action on the issue, mate? What are you doing with that? Uh, we'll, we'll continue to assess uh, the, the analytics over the course of a season. We'll do that across the game. We're doing that as a matter of course. But when we see clear action that's required, we'll do it. And, and we've demonstrated this again today by saying to you that we've spent time assessing the information and it's clear that with, with thorough direction to our match review, we've changed their, their focus and that will be applied from this weekend. How long, how long do you think the message will take to sink in the players? Uh, to be honest, I think it's already sinking in. Uh, and sometimes there are moments in the game where we can make significant fundamental change. And, we do not want to see players lifted into dangerous positions. That's effectively what I'm saying to you today. We cannot allow players to be lifted into dangerous spots, and if they do, there'll be a, a charge that goes with it. Does this cover you legally as well? It's got nothing to do with any legal ramifications. It's got to do with what's right for the outcome of the game. Mate, you're reading a couple of your releases. You're not happy with some of the match review decisions. You weren't happy with the referees yesterday not blowing time off. There's a few big dramas. Oh, this is rugby league. Um, and I think we need to know that we're not always going to get everything right. Um, we're doing as much as we possibly can to get it right, but it's not easy. Um, you know, decisions of referees and match officials are in real time. They don't have the ability to think uh, beyond the fact. They have to make decisions, and we want to encourage them to make decisions. How did you respond to the Dragons' call for getting the two points? Uh, about them asking for it? It's not going to happen. Uh, it was never considered, and it won't be considered. The Dragons' rules were upset. They played the last 30 seconds with... No, that's an issue for them and how they manage their interchange. When Robbie Parra said the week before in the King of Round 5 that someone's going to lose a big game out of this, was anything done? In respect to what, Paul? The time, the clock, the time. This, this, this issue from, last no, uh, from Monday night had nothing to do with the clock. It was an issue, it was a split second decision from when the hooter sounded to when the referee decided to call time off. A split second decision. Almost simultaneous with the words we used yesterday. And the referee missed by 0.6 of a second in that decision-making process. Is it really an issue for the Dragons with the management of their interchange when we're talking so much about player safety and they erred on the side of safety and then didn't put a bloke back on? Other clubs have been guilty of it. I mean, surely you've got to come up with something where they're always going to be erring on the side of safety and, and not saying, oh, you've got to keep a bloke up in case it happens late in the game. Well, what I'd say to you is I, I was really pleased with a number of clubs over the weekend, particularly the Dragons, seeing that player safety was put first and foremost and players were taken off when they suffered head knocks. That's the exact application of how the policy is. How that is applied through clubs and the way they use their interchange is a matter for them. 
Um, but I was really pleased to see player safety put first, and that was by a number of clubs, including the Dragons. Todd, is there a possibility the lifting tackle will be banned after the Rules Committee meeting? No, I've made it pretty clear here today that lifting tackles are a part of the game. Uh, as are three-man tackles, as are two-man tackles. We're not looking to ban lifting tackles. We're looking to ban the tackles that have a dangerous element within them. We're looking to move them out of the game, and we'll do that through application of tough penalties through gradings. Darren Lockie is on that committee. He's called for lifting tackles to be banned. Do you take? No, he hasn't. I think you really need to be careful with what people are saying. Darren hasn't called for lifting tackles to be banned. And you need to listen really carefully to what people are talking about. And we need to talk in facts, and we need to talk on what's actually evidenced. And that's not by moving lifting tackles out of the game. There are numerous tackles in the game that include a lift that are completely safe. A, a one-on-one -on -one tackle or a two-man tackle that includes some form of lift is quite often not dangerous. And there are hundreds of those tackles that we've assessed over the first six rounds that are not dangerous. There is a very small number of lifting tackles that are dangerous. And these are the ones we're targeting. Their hands between the legs are indicators. They are sometimes indicators. But again, I'll be, I'll be as clear as I can on this. If you lift a player in a game and place him in a dangerous position, you can expect to be charged. So the dangerous lifting tackles, why not ban them? If they're the three-man lifting tackles, why not, why not ban them? When you say ban, what we're saying to you is if you do it, there's an ultimate consequence. Same as uh, shoulder charges, same as high tackles, there are outcomes that come with the consequence of your decision. So if you lift a player, put him in a difficult position that we deem dangerous, you'll be charged. We're having players not penalised on the field even when the video referee looks at incidents and yet then they're being charged. That has to be a concern, the players say it is. Yeah, we've spoken to referees about you know this issue as well. By and large, we're pretty happy with how they've done it over the first six rounds. They're going to miss some things. And again, that's because we've got humans with whistles in their mouths and it's no, difficult, no, they're not they, going to see everything. The video referee, like on the weekend, Frank Pritchard, the video referee had a look at that. Hmm. Didn't, there wasn't even a penalty, hmm. then he gets charged. Yeah, and, and again, we're not perfect. And I'm not saying standing here today saying we are perfect, but what I am saying is we're working as hard as we possibly can across a range of portfolios to be, bring consistency to the table. And that's what we're trying to do today on lifting tackles, provide some level of consistency for our clubs and players to understand, again, you put a player in a dangerous spot, expect a charge. Have you consulted with coaches, players, referees on this issue? Yeah, we, we, we speak widely um, and we consult widely, but again, this decision is based on research and facts and information out of the first six rounds, and it was clear to us this decision was the right one. Who took that? I mean, you and who else were involved? Oh, look, there's a range of people that we talk to and pressure test different things with, but the coaches and the clubs have got a memo this afternoon that outlines this in great detail. So I'm not sure exactly. Say the, um, the, the, the tackle from, from, from Chambers, where there was two people involved, is the second person culpable too? Well, he could be. He could be. Every tackle's different. So quite often in the analytics we've provided, in a, I'm not going to talk specifically about an individual tackle. It's not helpful because every single tackle you'll see is different. Quite often in the analytics we provided, the three-man tackle, it's not the third man you have to be worried about. Sometimes it's the first one. Sometimes it's the second one. There's not a clear line on every tackle. Every single one's different. But we're very clear on the message out of today, which is this. If you place a player, if you lift a player, and he's coming down above the horizontal with his head or neck going towards the ground, irrelevant of the outcome, you can expect a charge. That's crystal clear.